Hello, everyone. Welcome to Approaching the MBE presented by Adaptivar. My name is Jacob Rooney, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Adaptivar. We know that at this point, many of you are spending the majority of your time studying, and we want to help you make the most of it. How you approach your bar prep and the habits you form are just as important as the studying itself, especially with this year's bar prep season being uniquely affected. Our goal with this webinar is to present you with tips and advice to ensure your studying is as efficient and productive as possible. We will also provide guidance on how to adjust your schedule and timeline if you are one of the many students facing uncertainty with your exam date. Here to present his expertise is Professor Jonathan Grossman. Thanks, Jacob. It's great to be with you guys during this crazy summer and a summer and an early fall that uh, probably can only get crazier. So I want you to know that we're here for you and look forward to giving you what I hope will be some, some practical and substantive tips on how to kind of navigate yourself through the day-to-day -day parts of uh, studying and to prepare you in the most efficient way to conquer the MBE. Thanks, Jonathan. To start us off, we are going to look at your day-to-day -day studying and what you should be focusing on to make sure you're getting the most out of every single day. The number one mistake that a lot of people make, in my opinion, on a day-to-day -day basis is they're too focused on how fast they're going and what they're going to do at the end of the day into tomorrow and what's the one thing they don't do enough of, and that's review. Some of that is because a lot of the commercial companies have to keep you moving 100 miles an hour doing so much stuff. You're always worried about, am I finishing the daily tasks? Am I checking off all the boxes? And how many questions that I do to keep up with my friends who are supposed supposedly Facebook messaging, messaging me and telling me how, how great they're doing on those questions. First of all, when you get those messages from your friends, they're usually lying and they didn't do 75 questions and they certainly didn't get 75%, right? They usually got 55% right and they're not doing as many questions and that's why they're texting you because they want to find out how you're doing so they could feel better about themselves. So always ignore those crazy text messages from your idiot friends who you got through law school in the first place. You need to worry about the number one thing each day is review. Some review of the rules in any of those topics you've already covered. A couple of questions in those topics. Don't do 50 tort questions for two days and then not do a tort question for another two weeks. That's why a lot of students ride that emotional roller coaster on their stats. One day you're at 68, the next day you're at 52, and it just keeps going up and down all over the place. That's because you're losing the sharpness with the elemental parts of the definitions and the reading comprehension, which if you don't know me, that's what I talk about a lot. How am I reading the questions? So what do I recommend? Two, three minutes a day, three, four minutes a day. Put in your daily routine. I'm going to take three, four minutes and review for whatever MBE topic and or whatever UBE or your state essay portion, a couple of minutes a day, a forced review of whatever you've already done. One or two or two or three questions in any topic you've already done. This way, as you're moving forward end of this month into the next month, and certainly for uh, you September takers, we'll talk about that too. You want to feel like you're bringing a lot of the material with you. You're not going to have to go back and reread, re-review, and redo more questions in any of those earlier topics. You want to feel like you're building momentum. If you finally get toward okay, you get crim law, you want to keep toward. You want to keep crim law. You can't study the whole outline every day. You can't do 50 questions a day in every topic. But one or two questions, two or three questions, three, four minutes of recitation of law goes a long way if you're doing it a couple times a day, seven days a week. And that's the most important thing you want to be focusing on in terms of big picture every day is do some review. Even if you don't finish what you'd like to in the new material, what you're currently studying, you can finish that tomorrow. The next day, there's always time for that. But you don't want to be panicking two weeks before the bar or a week before the bar having to go back and re-review, oh my God, I'm forgetting everything. That's going to happen anyway to some degree. Something will always slip through the cracks. But you want to feel like you're bringing up more of these questions with you. And that's from making yourself budgeting some time for review every single day on your questions that you're doing every day. People are worrying about how many and what their score is. The goal of studying each day is to figure out from your mistakes, which again rules am I forgetting based on what I just said. I thought I was doing okay in tort or crim law or con law. Now I'm realizing I'm forgetting some of the scrutinies. I'm forgetting a couple of elements of larceny by trick or bar burglary. Let me do more questions. No, that's the worst thing you could do. Of the mistakes that you make on your daily sets of questions, which ones are mistakes based on law that you didn't remember? Go back and review those rules and put the rules back in your head right now. Which of the questions you got wrong? 
because you made some reading comprehension mistakes. Are you glazing out a little bit? Reading too quick, overanalyzing. Which of those questions, when you look at the answer, oh, I should have seen that. Oh, if I just saw he didn't intend to take the watch. Oh, what a stupid mistake. Print out those questions. Rip them out of the book. Print them out and take your highlighter and highlight those words those sentences that you would have, could have, should have seen, that you did see, but you allowed the other language and the answers to distract you. Diagram, chart them up, study and review those reading comp mistakes and say, boy, if I just focus a little more on my reading, I can get these right. If I put some of these rules back in my head, I can get those right. Now my 57 or my 58 or my 62, 63% for the day could easily be 65, 66. And I actually know why I'm getting some of these questions mistake, or getting them wrong. Most people are just doing questions at this point for the sake of doing the questions. Be more analytical, be more honest with yourself, as I like to say. Distinguish the rules you need to review, distinguish the reading comp mistakes that you made. And if you can focus on fixing those mistakes and doing some forced review of those rules from the earlier topics, you'll be in great shape as you continue to move forward. But the goal of every day is to feel like when I put my head on that pillow and I'm staring at the bedroom ceiling and I can't sleep because I'm getting nauseous about the bar, you take that Zen deep breath and say, at least I'm remembering more law. At least I'm seeing why I made some mistakes. The issue is not did you have a good or bad day with the questions. The issue is did you learn from whatever mistakes you made so you minimize those mistakes moving forward. That's progress every day. Not just saying, look at me, I sat at the desk for nine hours and now I'm exhausted. That's the biggest recipe for failure for the bar. It's all about the quality of what you're doing, not about the quantity of how many hours you're sitting at the desk. Focus on some forced review, a couple of questions and any topics you've done each and every day and be honest with yourself as to why you miss some of the current questions you're missing and focus on fixing black letter versus reading comp and then you move forward. Thank you, Jonathan. Next, we will be focusing on building a schedule and timeline for your studying. We will be dividing this into two sections, one to focus on those of you taking the exam in July still, and the second part will be for those of you in a jurisdiction who has rescheduled the exam to September or even maybe early October. Let's talk about the July takers first, because obviously there's a sense of urgency with those students. What I certainly recommend moving into July as we get to the end of this month and into July, I think again, one mistake a lot of students make is they overcompensate and they're doing too much of one part of the exam. We're at it, whatever jurisdiction you're taking the bar in is obviously the MBE plus your essay portion, written portion, and or MPT, et cetera, et cetera. And some people do 100, 150 questions on MBE for two, three days. Then they go look at some essay. I like to consider breaking your day up and doing a balanced approach. In July, you should be doing a set of mixed MBE questions. That's assuming you're feeling comfortable with the black letter law in those subjects. That's what I always believe. It always starts with the basics of making sure you have a good foundation of that black letter law in each of those subjects. I wouldn't be doing questions in contracts or civ pro or property if I really was honest with myself and I felt I could use a good hour or two review of some definitions. You wanna do that because otherwise you're just gonna be doing the questions and getting the 55% and that's where people get frustrated. But for the July takers, I would be saying morning, afternoon, evening, or however your daily routine is, break it up into thirds first thing I would do every day is my set of MBE questions when you're fresh. Because if you do them too late at night, you know what happens. Your number is not a fair representative of what you know. So I would be doing a nice set of 30, 35 mixed MBE questions every day when I'm nice and fresh. Give me a little time to review that. If you have the time and you can do an extra four or five questions uh, of a single topic, so again, if I started on Sunday and I did 30, 35 mix every day, and then I did an extra four, five, six tort questions, I did that on Monday and I did a four or five extra crim law questions, you do one small set plus a mix set at the end of every week, you can start the whole process all over again the next week and literally do that four to five times from now till the end of the month. That'll leave you your afternoon and evening to focus on essay prep and or MPT or your state multiple, whatever the state portion or other portions that you need to do. Don't spend nine hours on one thing and 20 minutes on something else. Your big boys and girls on the day you need to do some extra MBE because you're okay with your essay or vice versa, that's okay. But again, I believe when you put that head on the pillow and you're thinking about the bar and nauseous, you wanna literally say, I'm okay. 
I'm getting a little better with MBE. I'm doing my writing. I'm covering all parts of the bar exam. What if I'm just taking the MBE, John? What about me? If you're just taking the MBE, then I would focus my morning on more of my review of Black Letter and my afternoon, early afternoon, before you get too tired, of doing my sets of questions. Would I still limit it to 30, 35 questions and a small set of a particular topic? Yes. I think it's too early to be doing 50, 80, 100 questions a day. I think if you're doing 30, 35 mix plus five or six uh, from a particular topic, that's already 40 or 45, but you, everybody should be using some time to be reviewing and you don't want to burn out. So I think for the July takers, don't overcompensate with one part vis-a-vis -vis the other. Try to break your day up into thirds. And if you then need a little extra time with one part of the exam for a day or two, then go ahead and take it, but keep the balance. Plus all the black letter rules you're gonna know for MBE is also helping you on any of those uh, essays that you need to write. If you don't know the rules for MBE, you don't know what on the essays either. And that's why at this time of year, some people bail on one sub part of the, you know what, I'm a terrible essay writer, I'll just try to kill the MBE or vice versa. No one can really go into this exam trying to kill something. Keep the balance between both sections or three sections and slowly but surely over time, you'll get better. For the September takers, I certainly would be overemphasizing an introduction and review of the black letter. I think it's a little early to be getting on adaptive art just to do 50, 100 questions a day. I'd rather you be focusing on the extra time to learn the black letter first, and then you can ease into doing the questions so that by the time you're getting to end mid of July, end of July and all of August, then you could feel like you're doing your 40, 50 questions a day and you'll actually be doing well. I think if you're doing too many questions right now and there is a school of thought out there that says just start doing questions and you'll learn the law from doing the questions it's a delicate balance there to be honest with you but in terms of time and again especially i know some jurisdictions are taking the bar at the end of september not even the beginning of september or as jacob said early october so i definitely would spend the next good three four weeks with a good hard boot camp review of my rules so when I begin doing the questions and or if I'm going in with a commercial bar uh, course that'll start sometime, then you're already way ahead. And the goal of what we all know is to try to be a little bit ahead if at all possible. That's better to do now with the law. So when they're telling you to do the review, you don't have to do as much of the review of those of the material because you already know a lot of the material and you can spend a lot more time with your questions. Don't burn out September takers on too many questions now. You'll get stale. You'll run through the whole bank of questions on Adaptabar and then be complaining. I'm seeing the same questions over and over again, and that leads to poor reading comprehension. July takers keep the balance now. September or October takers focus on your black letter law review now. And then later on, you can ease in to do the questions. And I think you'll be peaking at the right time, whether it's September or October. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, next topic that we will be focusing on is about staying engaged with your studies. This may be particularly relevant for those of you that are waiting until September or even October to take the bar exam as it can feel easy to lose motivation, but hopefully we can keep you uh, focused and, and give you some advice on how to do so. This is certainly the big question we all get all the time and it's very, very difficult, there's no question. And this summer and this whole cycle, I think, uh, you, you know, clearly is gonna be the most challenging and God knows the last hundred years probably. Uh, what do I say as a, in a normal course when things are quote unquote normal about this? Uh, I think that when people say to me, John, how long should I be studying every day? I need a schedule. I need structure. People are using these terms uh, too, too broadly. When I say the word or you say the word to me, study, that means when you're sitting at the proverbial desk in front of the laptop with a book, et cetera, and you're studying, you're reviewing material and or doing questions. I think the way to stay engaged is to make studying part of your overall daily routine. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. You walk the dog, you go out for a jog. Hopefully, of course, everyone is doing the right things and staying safe, please, of course. But whatever you're doing in your normal course, you're watching old TV, Netflix, Amazon. I got plenty of good shows for you to, to recommend, by the way, in case you wanna email me. I got, I'm, I'm a big TV and uh, classic movie guy. But if you're watching a Netflix show and it says next episode, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, et cetera, et cetera, instead of clicking, let's go ahead, you can be reciting some rules in those 10 seconds. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, you're microwaving the bad pizza, you're doing the laundry, you take the dog for a walk, you're going out for a jog, you're sitting on the couch thinking about the bar. You can always be reciting black letter law when you're not studying. 
So I believe there's two types, two things you're doing every day. There's the time when you're studying and I'm sitting at the desk, but then there's the other 12 hours, 13 hours or more a day when you're not sitting at the desk and studying. Two, three minutes of review of black letter, being able to recite the rules. One of my many mantras is if you can't speak it, then you don't know it. You may know what it looks like, you know what page it's written on on your outline, you know what color you tab that outline in pink, yellow, or green, but if you can't spit out the black letter law, not only is it again hurting you on MBE, it's potentially hurting you on when you write an essay, especially for you UBE people. Uh, black letter law from MBE is exactly the same rules you're writing on the essays anyway, it's two for one. So I say the way to stay engaged is not, uh, not freaking out and worrying about, I don't really wanna go sit at the desk right now, I just don't feel like it. My mantra is sit on the couch, put your head back and say, okay, torts, negligence. What would I say about negligence? Strict liability, product, larceny, burglary, robbery. Can I spit out dying declaration? Oh, it's when the guy thinks he's dying. No, spit out the rule. If you can't and you have a panic attack, what do you do? You have your notes or your flashcards next to you. You pick them up, you look at it, you say the, you say the definition a couple of times, put it down and spit it out. You have a dog or a cat, make them the smartest pets in America. You talk to those pets over and over again. So I believe that you could be doing a lot of review and studying when you're not sitting at the desk, which gives you the incentive and the motivation that you actually can feel better about yourself. You know what? He's right. I actually know more than I thought. Let me go do some questions. Let me go read the outline. Let me go watch the lecture. Let me go forward. You need to incentivize yourself and motivate yourself. Now, that's very tricky because I know that confidence and doing well is like a chicken and egg thing. You know, you have your uh, family and friends out there with Facebook. You're going to crush it. You're going to kill it and all that stupid stuff. You and I both know your family has no idea what the hell this is all about. I do. That's my brand. I know how much it sucks to sit down at the computer, these, especially these days, and actually study. So I say you want to minimize the time that you have feel like a ball and chain when you're sitting at the computer. And you're going for a walk and you're doing the rest of your daily life. If some of you have to be actually going into an office or you're doing some remote working that you have to do again please stay safe uh again you're in the car you're walking to work you're at home you're going into the kitchen to take breaks whatever you need to do that time should be proving to yourself that you're spitting out some black letter law you're burnt out of sitting at the couch go sit on uh, sitting at the desk excuse me go sit on the couch go take a look at some of those printed questions you took that you got wrong from adaptive art see why you made some of those mistakes be again as i always say analytical with yourself the way to stay engaged is by making the review and the studying part of your daily routine incorporated into your normal routine you have a good friend that you trust instead of doing the upside down smiley faces on facebook where you have your pity party for yourself do some text messaging and challenge yourself to spit out some black letter law go watch some tv take the breaks and i think by the way you need to be taking more breaks than you ever did before since we're all or most of us hopefully are home more often you don't have that i'm going to school i'm going here or there if you are uh, have access to a library or something you just may need to take that many more breaks don't take three hour breaks but if you need to take that 10 15 minute break to clear your head go text go do whatever you do then come back again i'll keep repeating for this whole webinar and every day through the bar it's quality and not quantity. So if you need to study in five, 10, 20 minute segments, as opposed to an hour, that's the way to go. Because if you're just going like this and you're just going like this and you're just going like this after 10 or 15 minutes, you can sit there, but you're not accomplishing anything. Make studying part of your overall routine. There's the time that I spend at the desk for my study of my new material and my practice questions or writing my essay. But when I'm not sitting at the desk, I can be reciting these rules and build confidence and feel like I really know this stuff and make it part of your overall routine rather than how many hours do I have to sit at the desk. And you'll find you're actually gonna accomplish more that way than what you're doing physically when you're just sitting at the desk studying. Awesome, lots of great advice there. The next section, we will be covering the differences in how to approach the MBE if you are a first time or if you are a repeat taker. Boy, it's a good thing we're only going remote because Jacob would have to tackle me to stop me from talking about this one because we could have a four hour webinar on this one alone, that's for sure. I do think that there's so much of a difference of a mindset between the first time taker and the repeat taker. So let's talk about the first time takers first, no pun intended. The first time taker is the, good, the thing you have going for you is the same exact thing that works against you. And I say that as a, this is a compliment when I teach at law schools, the third year students for bar prep, I say this on the first day of, the, of every semester. 
The good and bad thing about first time takers is they're cocky and they're arrogant. They know they have a big chip on their shoulder. I could learn anything in two hours. I've crammed for final exams my whole my whole career. I don't have to worry about this. I'm going to let the commercial course take care of everything. My buddy blew off the lectures from the commercial course. He just sat on the couch last summer and he did a thousand questions a day and he passed the bar. You're very cocky and arrogant. I've never failed a test that really mattered. I'm not going to fail this one either. And therefore, you actually study for this test, especially the MBE, the way you studied in law school, which is basically cramming and I can figure out and work the system. You can't do that on this test. So the first time takers need you need to understand, in my opinion, the MBE is not harder than everyone likes to make it seem, but it's different. You need to study different. You need to practice different. So a first time taker should be focusing on black letter law memorization. In school, we didn't have to memorize much. You kind of skimmed that four page single space pencil outline that you made or you got from your idiot friend 24 hours before the final. You kind of read it over five times and you then vomited out the stuff to the professor in three hours. Now they want you to know black letter law. Now you have to be focusing on am I reading the questions correctly? I teach a very practical, easy way on how to read the questions so you're not getting it down to two and just making guesses all the time. First time takers, this is a different exercise than school. I didn't say harder, I said different. So you really, really want to focus on, like I say to my own students, don't fear this test, but give it the respect that it deserves. And respect, I mean, you've got to challenge yourself to be changing, tweaking how you're approaching this. How do I approach this? I'm focusing on black letter reading comprehension and as i always say do i am i confident in how i'm reading the questions do i know why i'm picking a or am i just going well c and d are stupid and i'm going eeny meeny miny mo focus more on your approach focus more on black letter law respect the process you cannot cram for this test so as we're now coming to you know almost a month out you want to really really be careful and say hey Am I approaching this the right way? Am I leaving too much for next month? I cannot cram. I know you're very confident and that's the confidence you need when you go take the test, but all the confidence in the world is not gonna help you if you don't have enough of these black letter definitions at the tip of your tongue. And again, as I say, whether it's MBE or your essay portion, if you don't have those buzzwords out there, you can't write an essay and they want black letter law, not all of it, but enough of it. And many, many more of these MBE questions than anybody will ever tell you is really, really about the simple black letter definition. So focus on those rules and focus on your reading and don't make and don't study for this test the same way you were studying for school. So you can use that cockiness and confidence and arrogance when you walk in the room, but it's now backed up with some ammunition so you know how to take the test. Respect the process, black letter reading comp. For my repeat takers, I love you guys, love you. But you know what it's like when you lose the cockiness and arrogance and the confidence, because once, God forbid, you're not successful on the bar the first time, especially with the MBE, you don't have confidence, which is the most important thing, especially when you do multiple choice. Because when you have that moment, that fork in the road moment, I could go for A, I could go for B, once they get in your head, you know what happens. You're not confident you got that sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. And that's why I say that the confidence is that chicken and egg thing. Everyone's telling you, you're going to be great. You're going to crush it. You're going to do all these great things. I do too. I'm Mr. The glass is half full. Anyone who knows me knows I'm the one trying to convince you why you can and you will pass this test, but it needs to be backed up with some substance. From my repeat takers, as I said earlier, be honest with yourself. Which subjects don't you really have a good grasp of that black letter law? That's what you need to fix immediately. Don't keep doing questions. Don't keep skimming outlines. Go back and say, can I find another seven, 10, 12 definitions that I, I can put in my head so I walk into the exam feeling different? Why do people repeat the exam? They make the same mistakes over and over again, as stupid as that sounds. One mistake is they never fixed the black letter law that they didn't know the first or second or more than that time. Are you knowing a lot of black letter law? Could you teach a lot of this stuff? But you're reading the questions all backwards then you need to take a step back and not focus on how many questions you're doing. You need to focus again on why am I getting these questions wrong? Reading comprehension, which usually means for repeat takers, you're reading too quickly because you're too trying to focus on how many questions am I doing every day rather than why am I making these mistakes? I'm not slowing down and reading the facts. I'm not really asking myself what each answer is really about. I'm just trying to focus on my results and my numbers rather than what am I doing? 
especially for my repeat takers, but the first timers too, this time of year, everyone's self-esteem and confidence is based on your daily percentage, right? If someone calls you or I called you in the morning and said, how you doing today? You wouldn't say, okay, you'd say 72%. If I call you tomorrow, how are you doing today? 52%, John. You're basically living based on your number every day. It's ridiculous. But the percentage is based on how much law do I know and how am I reading the question? So for my repeat takers, I know you need a pity party for yourself every day. Cry, scream, hit the wall, do it. Get the frustration out. It does suck. There's no question about it. There's no silver lining. The silver lining is, though, that if I tweak and fix the rules I didn't know before, I am more focused on how I read these questions. I'm not trying to be the first one to finish. I'm changing the way I'm studying for the test. I'm not just doing 50 questions a day, hoping to learn the law by accident. I'm actually acknowledging that I'm changing my approach and I'm more careful with the questions that I'm reading each day. Then you can go into the room, the convention center, wherever you take the test with more confidence. The first timers have confidence. Bar prep drains that right out of you. The first timers will have to keep that cockiness and that arrogance. The repeat takers are not going to get it automatically because you're watching a motivational movie. You need to get it from acknowledging, hey, now I do know the law better. Now I see that I'm reading the questions better. By the fact that you're on Adaptive Bar, you're doing the best practice questions you possibly can do. Yes, I'm biased and prejudiced about that. But those questions are only as good as your knowledge of the law and how you're reading them. And again, so don't do the questions just for the sake of saying, I did 2,000. What are you going to do for me? You have to be honest with yourself. But for my repeat takers, get the confidence that I can fix, tweak, or change how I'm approaching this. How much more law do I know? Am I a little more careful on how I'm reading the questions? And then you'll gain that confidence as you walk into that room. And as I like to say, when you know what the answer is, you got to shut up and pick it and trust your confidence, both for repeat takers and first time takers. Once you're there, you shut up and pick it with confidence. Thank you so much, Jonathan. The final topic we will be covering in today's webinar is going to be about how to prioritize your studying in today's busy world. As law school graduates, you inherently have busy lives and finding the appropriate amount of time can be difficult. Combine this with the state of current events and it can seem very impossible to focus on bar prep. We hope that we can help you overcome this feeling and get back on track. Yeah, Jacob, there's no question that, as I said earlier, as you said, this, this, these are crazy, crazy times. And uh, the last day of every semester, when I teach bar prep at the schools, uh, I give a little speech to those first time takers. And I literally say, uh, everybody by the end of the summer is going to have a bar story. Uh, I said at the end in April, at the end of this semester, who knew that you're already going to have a bar story before bar prep even begins? So everyone does have a bar story, and this is crazy. What I say to people under normal circumstances, and even more so, of course, now, is the following, that the one big problem that everybody has taking the bar is that there would be distractions that we all have in life, and now we have a huge distraction, maybe even a couple of distractions. And it makes you, the student, have to be more aggressive with your ability to literally put those proverbial blinders on and focus out all that white noise. More, more students than ever are worrying about the job market. You're worrying about that anyway, but now especially, what's going to happen after I take the bar? Is society going to be back? What am I going to do? My student loan, what am I going to do about that? I thought I was going to transplant and go move someplace else. What am I going to do about that? Going and finding a place. All that other real life stuff, which of course is incredibly important. But you know what? Whatever date you are taking the bar, July, September, October, whenever it's going to be, that's for the day after you take the bar. If you've, got, if you've got one eye on all those problems, you're going to take your eye off the ball and you're not focusing on what you need to do right now. Get that sense of urgency. I like to say get a little pissed off. Statistically speaking, your best shot at passing the bar is the first time you take the bar. Anyone who's a repeat taker knows what I'm talking about. It's very, very difficult to stomach that stuff, that, that uh, uh, intestinal fortitude and that motivation and that stick to itiveness to do this again. So get that sense of urgency, not panic or fear, never, but get the sense of urgency of I'll deal with all that later. Once I get this done, everything else will take care of my uh, take care of itself. My buddy from law school gave me the best advice I ever got, and I use it now for bar prep all the time. And he told me, John, think of the bar license as a ticket, as a key, a key that's going to open up a door a ticket you can hand when you walk into a concert hall or a stadium. It's a key or a ticket that allows you to go open a door for the rest of your life. Many of you don't even know what that rest of your life is going to be right now in terms of career, location, et cetera, like I said. 
but who cares? Once you pass this test, those doors will open up at the right time. It's very difficult because it's unknown right now. I God knows I understand that, but there's nothing you can do about that. And like the cliche goes, you only have to worry about those things you can control. And knowing the black letter and reading the questions the right way and preparing the right way, you have control over that. Because wherever you're taking the bar, whatever room you end up in, when that proctor finally says begin, and there's that one second of let's go, you take that Zen deep breath, close your eyes, and you realize there's nothing they can do to me now. Not the current situation with life, your own personal situation. Nothing matters as long as I read these 200 questions the way that I know how. And for those six hours, you have those blinders on and you block everything else out. Whether you're studying an hour a day, four hours a day, 20 minutes, or six hours. While you're studying, while you're reciting, your focus is, am I doing this the right way? How, why do athletes and performers perform well under pressure? Fundamentals. You can't walk into the bar and say, I'm going to have a good lucky guessing day. You have to build up those fundamentals. And the fundamentals are the black letter. I'm studying the right way. If you do that consecutive, consecutive days uh, consistently enough, you'll then do it on the day of the bar. It's more difficult to do it day by day right now, but that's what you want to focus on. Leave all the what ifs, what about, what's going to happen when I'm wearing a mask in the convention center, what are they going to do? Nobody has those answers. Let that take care of itself. With a mask, with craziness, with all the other distractions going on, eventually that lady or man's going to just shut up and say begin. And then the question is, has my muscle memory in my head been so consistent and successful that I know how to read these questions like the back of my hand? So even though I've never done it in a crazy room, socially distanced with a mask on, the questions are not going to change. You know what rules are testing you on. You know what the questions are going to look like. And you're just going to say when you walk out of that room, it was just like doing another 200 questions on Adaptabar. That's the goal. And that's what my students always say under normal circumstances. That's what you want to say now. Leave all that other stuff outside. When you are studying, focus as difficult as it is to do that and say, I know that if I can approach this exam and think of that ticket that I'm going to get as a key that's going to open up the door to the rest of my life, where's it going to go? I don't know. But eventually you're going to get there. But let this be a beginning, not an end. And repeat takers know how difficult it feels because they feel like they're banging their head against the wall all the time. You don't want to feel like that. Push, put, take a step back, go around the wall and say, I'm tweaking how I'm approaching. I'm going to change how I'm reading these questions, change my knowledge of the law. And then all of a sudden they'll punch my ticket and then you'll go on with the rest of your life and have nothing but success. Leave all that stuff aside, focus on the priorities, stick to the fundamentals, quality of studying, whether it's two minutes, two hours, or 20 hours, and walk into that room with those blinders on that even though things are crazy, you have that solid concentration like those athletes and performers do. When they uh, do well under pressure, it's because muscle memory. No matter what's going on, they trust their muscle memory. They trust the fundamentals. They'll re you'll read those questions just like you've been doing for the last two months, and I know you'll be successful. And that wraps up our webinar. Thank you so much for everybody who has watched. And great advice as always, Jonathan. Thank you again for joining us. If you still have any questions about the Adapt Bar program or how we can help you pass the MBE, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at either the email listed or the phone number above. We are always happy to help. We are always help, happy to give advice and to help guide you. We hope that this webinar has helped guide your studies during these uncertain times, and we are wishing you the very best of luck on your upcoming bar exam, whenever that may be. Thanks, Jacob. And again, we are here for you. Uh, we are here day by day, week to week. I know what this is all about. This is my life. I study this test. I work with uh, first time takers, repeat takers all the time. So I'm more than happy to speak to you on an individual basis. This, I speak your language, know we're here for you. You're working with the best questions, with the best program, and anything I can do or we can do to help you, know we're in it with you and uh, want to do nothing but build that confidence so you walk into that exam to shut up and pick it. Best of luck. Thank you again.